Welcome back, Troglodytes, to another episode of Trogly's Guitars. Hey, today we have a Road Warrior. This used to be Silver Burst, but now it's kind of a Gold slash Amber Burst. And especially on the headstock here, that's some dark lacquer. This was a guitar that was played very heavily in a band, but unfortunately, uh, that guitarist had fell on hard times and had to sell his number one here. Now, this guitar has a little bit of a backstory of how I got it. It was listed on eBay by a zero feedback seller and that's usually red flag number one if they don't have any feedback and they're selling something high-end like this. Sometimes they don't actually own what they're trying to sell. So it ended at auction for a decent price, I think it was around $2,400, but then it got relisted a few days later. So I was a little bit skeptical when I made an offer on this guitar because it was relisted not as an auction, but you know, best offer. So I made my offer and uh, I went away from my computer for a little bit and the seller had countered my offer just a little bit higher. But then they retracted their counter offer and uh, a little bit later on they sent me a message and go, I accidentally declined your offer, could you please make it again? So it's like, um, okay, I guess, I guess I'll make it again. Cause I probably would have took his counter offer originally, but uh, it was still kind of a high risk transaction. So I was glad I could save a little bit. So I ended up completing the transaction, sending my payment and four days go by. I haven't heard anything from the seller at all. So I'm a little bit leery that this was kind of a scam. But, you know, eBay's pretty good about getting your money back anyway. So. Usually I'll take the risk if there's a little bit of a reward at the end. After the four days had passed, I sent a message to the seller asking, Hey, uh, when is this guitar going to ship? I was just curious. I hear nothing from him the whole day. And then towards the end of the day, uh, I get a refund notice and order canceled. So it's like, okay, maybe this guy had second thoughts. He didn't want to scam me after all. Uh, and then the next morning, he comes back and says, oh, I accidentally canceled your order. So I'm thinking, ah, <laughs> should, should I try this again? Because at that point, I was fairly certain this guitar did not exist in that seller's hands. At that point, I asked him, will this ship today? He said he, he might be able to get it out the same day if he can find somebody to give him a ride to UPS. If not, it would definitely be the next day. So. I thought this was bizarre. How does somebody accidentally cancel an order, as they say, and accidentally take back their counter offer instead of declining? It was a very fishy situation to say the least, but I'm covered by eBay protection, so I was like, okay, <laughs> I'll buy the guitar again. So I complete the transaction one more time, and you know, four days later or so, it I was surprised this thing would actually show up. Now this silver burst is absolutely disgusting looking. I'll, I'll tell you that. It's, it's got that road worn vibe and you're either going to dig this or not, but it really helps to hold it. I was talking to my wife about guitars and their condition because she looked at this thing and she's like, ew, that, that doesn't even look silver burst anymore. There's four stages in a guitar's life. There's the mint condition stage, and when it comes to buying mint condition vintage stuff, you know, that's what everybody wants. They kind of want that nice collector's piece, you know, if you're a collector. And stage two is the very lightly played, no major wear and tear. That's talking, you know, a really nice clean finish. You got a few nicks and dings. That's what a lot of players are looking for. And then stage three is kind of the stage where a guitar is worth the least amount. Because mint condition, obviously high prices, very clean with just some marks and dings. You can fetch some good prices. But stage three is when a guitar is worth the least, in my opinion. Uh, as far as the silver burst goes, that's when uh, it's kind of aged a little bit, but you have finish wear on the neck. Just a little bit. You know, it's like rubbing off the side and the bare neck is showing. Uh, it's still a clean example, but it's kind of got a big eyesore on it. And that's when people kind of, you know, lean away from that example and they go, I'll wait till a better one comes on. So after stage three, 
not every guitar will reach stage four when it just becomes so modified and so aged and checked and just perfectly road worn that it actually becomes more valuable because it's just that aged look that you can't replicate this. You can't. I don't care what type of, you know, lacquer checking techniques you have, uh, whatever stuff you do to make it look old, you cannot replicate years and years and years of being on the road. And this one, I say, falls under, under category four. It's got that perfect weather checking. Nothing is original on this guitar except for the pots and the truss rod cover and obviously the husk and finish itself. But this guitar is magical. It's, if you're into tool, uh, the band tool Adam Jones uses, I believe he uses a 79 similar to this. I think he also uses like a 84. He has quite a few of these. But this is the guitar. You've got a Seymour Duncan 59 in the neck and you've got a uh, JB in the bridge and gosh this thing just howls it's just such a great player I can't believe it uh, tailpiece has obviously been replaced the bridge has been replaced kind of a an ABR one style but it looks like it's on the original posts now I do want to say that the bridge is pretty well decked however the action is very good nice and low I would actually say you might want to raise it a hair because there can be a little bit of buzzing if you're playing up here on the low E but whoever plays up there anyways because it's perfect for the high E so I would say you might want to raise the action a hair but it was just set up by a guitar center guy that said hey it's great so it's like I'm just gonna leave it the way it is the three-way switch has been replaced uh, the original one is included well what I appear what appears to be the original one anyways uh, knobs have been replaced. The tuners have been replaced quite a few times, but you're on a vintage pair of Schallers now. You have what appears to kind of be a semi-jumbo refret. I mean, they look like giant railroad tracks on like camera and photos, but they're really not that much taller than the stock frets, just a little bit, but they're definitely, you know, even wider. So this guitar plays effortlessly. So now that I've ranted on about how cool this guitar is and kind of the stages of the guitar's life, uh, let's go ahead and uh, dive into this beautiful silver burst. All right, here's the headstock of this beauty. Take a look at that. If you wonder why this thing is a dark pea yellow color, it's because it's been played in smoky bars. It's been out in the sun. Uh, the lacquer, you know, if you look right here, the lacquer's chipped so you can see the mother of pearl underneath. That's what all of this would have looked like brand new. But the clear lacquer has aged to this golden amber color over the years. And you don't see this on too many Gibsons. You've got to play guitar a lot in smoky bars to get to this level. This is also the first Paul Ustom I've ever had. Uh, the less and the C of the Les Paul Custom has kind of worn away. But that does appear to be original and the truss rod works flawlessly it's nice it moves very easily which i was happy to see sometimes when you see a guitar in this condition usually their truss rods will be about maxed out and that's the reason why somebody sold it but oh this one's great it's got plenty of adjustment room left to it and it's definitely been well maintained once again the tuners have been replaced to kind of a vintage set of shawlers it looks like you've had Grovers on it at one point in time as well, so you could always switch to Grovers if you don't like these things, but they work just fine. But you can see beautiful finish checking. It's kind of got a matted finish to it. You've got that one little small chip in the lacquer there, but, but no breaks, cracks, or repairs to this guitar, which is phenomenal for how much this thing's been played. The nut has been replaced. Uh, you can see it's kind of one of those shoddy jobs and then they kind of added a little bit of wood underneath it. So uh, not the best in the world, but it definitely functions the way it should as of right now. The ebony fretboard has been refretted as I talked about earlier. Once again, the frets are a little bit taller than stock, but definitely wider. It definitely makes this guitar a joy to play. Refretted customs always typically play better 
if they were done right. This was a very good refret job. Uh, there are a few chips in the ebony fretboard. There's one right here by the nut. And then there's another one right here that's kind of large. You can see right there. But it doesn't affect playability. But you do have some other tooling marks from the refret process. But overall, up here, they did a nice job. Ebony's hard to refret because it's fairly brittle and it chips. Beautiful 60s neck profile. The finish is well worn in. This, this guitar is such a joy to play. It's one you really have to just sit down with. Now we'll take a look at the finish here. Beautiful silver burst. Once again, three-way switch has been replaced. This came to me with a metal poker chip. I took it off and just restored it to kind of a traditional looking one. I don't even think this is an official Gibson part. It's a little flimsy. You can see you can peel it up. It's probably Epiphone or something, but hey, it does its job. But you can see there's some hazing to the finish in this area, but finish checking all over this thing. You can see you got some uh, clear coat wear. It's kind of interesting because the black has chipped away, but you can see the uh, silver underneath. I, when I saw pictures of this, I hated that. I was like, ah, I hate it when the finish is messed up on the front. But I, I really dig that. I think it looks cool since it's showing the silver undercoat. But look at all that beautiful finish checking. Just, gosh, this, this guitar has stories to tell. You can see there was definitely a pick guard on this at one point in time. The finish is a little bit brighter there, but definitely on its way to being aged the same color. The speed knobs have been replaced with uh, ones that kind of have grippers at the top. You can see here, you can take that little gripper off if you want, but then your knob's a little smaller at the top. So I would just suggest leaving it on. Uh, if you'd rather have a vintage set, of speed knobs. I do sell those at $50 a set. You can see there is some uh, finished shipping off around this area right here, but the finish is secure. Don't be scared that this thing's gonna start flaking off. Now, if you take a belt buckle and you start going, Ch -ch -ch, yeah, it's probably gonna flake off and uh, get damaged. But as of right now, I mean, you do have some light chipping to it, but again, just look at it. it it's nice and secure. This is just a beautifully well-played guitar. Again, you have a uh, JB and a 59. And, you know, I'm not one for modified guitars. You know, I like original pickups, but I can see why somebody put those in this thing, because they are just fantastic. Again, surprisingly, the pots are still original. However, obviously the wiring's kind of been touched up due to the three-way operation pickup swaps. The input jack has also been replaced fairly recently. Back of the headstock here, serial number 71649513, which makes this a Nashville made guitar. Again, it's had a few different sets of tuners. It looks like uh, Grover's and the original Schaller's with now the other vintage set of Schaller's. So they're kind of era correct replacement parts there, but nice dark ambered burst on the headstock. You can see you've got some uh, paint wear on the edges, but nothing to really worry about. No brakes, cracks, or repairs, but the finish on the neck has definitely been worn away. Now I kind of like this because it looks absolutely disgusting. Every time you play this guitar for the first week, you're going to want to wash your hands after it. <laughs> There's just so much mojo on this guitar. I would suggest uh, cleaning it to your own standards. I wiped it down good enough, but Surprisingly, this guitar doesn't smell. Like usually a guitar that's this ambered from smoke smells like smoke. I really don't get that vibe from this guitar. Now, it, obviously it has a little bit of a smell to it. It's not like roses and daisies over here, but it's it smells pretty okay for everything considered. It's just kind of that vintage guitar smell to it. But you can see you've got uh, some finish wear through to the maple neck here. But most of what you see is just the silver underlining coat. And it kind of distorts what the neck looks like sometimes. Like in photos, it makes the neck look weird. So I hope that uh, seeing this in the video kind of illustrates the wear. Now you could choose to uh, finish sanding off the finish on the neck and just having a nice smooth neck. But just leave it the way it is. It's really is a visual thing on this one. If you don't see all that wear, you just play it like normal. But once you see it, that's when you're like, ooh. 
but I love it. You've got some finish checking, some deep finish checking there, but those aren't brakes, cracks, or repairs. There is this little scratch here that you could mistake as a repair, but it's not. This thing black lights correctly. But it is a maple neck under here, 60s profile, and very heavily worn, and for a darn good reason. It is a fantastic player. You've got some wear around the heel joint, but no, the neck's never been out or anything like that. You've got some chipping to the finish there. Back of the guitar, this is usually another no-no for me. I hate it when Buckle Rash breaks the finish, but it really just ties in with the whole vibe of this guitar. You definitely don't have to be scared to play this one. You've got finish checking, buckle rash through the finish. It's definitely a well-worn guitar here. But, you know, I'm really attracted to this silver burst for some reason. It's like the perfect silver burst in my opinion. I like the clean ones. I've had mint condition ones. I've had somewhere in between. But as far as a vintage cool looking silver burst Les Paul that I can play. This is definitely the one. So it's kind of nice holding this guitar because it definitely feels lighter than it is. Take a look at the sides here. You've got Schaller strap buttons. Now the screws don't like stop at any point when you're tightening them down. They're a little loose when I got them. So you might need to fill those in and re-drill it just in case. Uh, but they are tightened down. It's just the screw keeps turning so there must be some type of gripping issue. So full disclosure there, that's kind of how both the strap buttons are. But you've got finish checking on the sides, large nicks and dings, once again replaced strap buttons, some chips to the finish, replaced input jack, but this thing is beautifully disgusting, that's all I've got to say. So I wasn't sure if this guitar actually existed. Or if I would actually end up getting it, but I played the guy's game and hey, I won this time. Silver Burst Customs are awesome. The prices are going through the roof. So if you want one of these, I would suggest getting one very soon before they're just too darn expensive. Usually I'm a big advocate for all original, but this guitar, it's been modded tastefully. It's very similar to Adam Jones' setup. I think he uses a Jazz in the neck instead of the 59 though, but the bridge pickup is the same. And that would explain why uh, when I try to play some Tool stuff, now I'm, I'm not the hugest fan of Tool, meaning I don't know every song they have ever done. I was introduced to them by, I, was, I think, Guitar Hero World Tour is when they did Schism. So that's definitely my favorite song by them, but this guitar, uh, it makes me ramble on and on. And if I ramble on and on and on about a guitar, you better know it's pretty good. Now, this guitar has aged so much that the black light is hard to see because it's ambered. But that, that is the original finish. You can kind of see it a little bit better there. But you can see the areas where there is some chipped lacquer. But beautiful headstock on this one. See, replaced nut, original inlays there. I do like the inlays. They've kind of aged a slightly green hue. I don't know if you guys noticed that or not. But we'll look at the body. Obviously, this thing's been sweated on. It's just kind of worn away the finish a little bit. It's dirty. Uh, as I said, once again, I just lightly wiped this guitar down. There's just such a mojo to this guitar. I mean, it's not filthy. I mean, it's not slimy when you touch this thing. It's just, you can definitely feel it's been well worn in. So you could probably definitely clean it better, but I didn't want to risk, you know, hurting the finish or anything. But you can see it is all the original finish on here, but you do have some dark spots from uh, dirt and dust and whatnot. These are the areas where you can see where the initial pick guard was on it, and that's where it kind of left its impression mark. Back at the headstock time, everything's looking good on here, but once again, lots of wear and tear. This is the real important part, is uh, showing there's no breaks, cracks, or repairs. There's that impression scratch line I was talking about. It's not a repair, you'll just have to take my word for it. Uh, you can see it's just an impression in the finish there that looks, you know, a little suspicious, but it's been taken a look at. But you can see the finish has been worn off the neck in multiple <laughs> locations. Uh, some areas it's all the way through to the neck and other areas you can see just the silver clear coat over it. 
definitely a well-worn neck, that's for sure. Uh, if you get this and you don't like the feel, I mean, it's really doesn't feel, you know, too much different than another neck. It might feel a little sticky in some areas, but it does feel very smooth, but you could take a little bit of steel wool and uh, flatten that out without completely taking the finish off. Back of the guitar, it's glowing as it should as well. And once again, lots of finish checking, just wear and tear in general. And as I said before, everything's been replaced. That includes the screws. Those screws are a little bit too small to be the original ones. I also want to make mention that the cavity shielding tin over it was missing its screws. So I put some paper towel to secure it. So if you take that off, you will see a piece of paper towel underneath there. Sides of the guitar, very dirty from sweat and all that, but uh, no breaks, cracks, or repairs, thankfully. That's what I was surprised about this guitar. I was almost certain I'd find a hidden repair or something. I mean, these areas that aren't glowing, that's just because they're dirty. I mean, you could clean this guitar a little better, but there's a lot of stuff caked on this guitar. This Golden Beast weighs 10 pounds, 4.7 ounces. The 79 Custom doesn't come with its original case. It would have originally came in a really cheap kind of a Gibson case. Some people like them, some don't. Or it could have also came in a chainsaw case, which is the best case ever made. But I'm guessing it came in one of the black Les Paul cases and that broke, so they ended up giving it a 90s case. And this one's ready to be retired as well. Uh, scuffs and scratches, you know, that doesn't bother me too much. But there is a, a structural concern over this one that I'll show you here in a second, but you can see all the wear and tear here. Uh, the structural concern is on the back here. You can see it had to have been dropped at some point in time, but you can actually get to the inside of the case from out here. You can see it's kind of peeling up here. It's just some cheap plywood. Now, you could uh, patch that somehow or just put a bunch of duct tape over that. Uh, that's something you could do. I mean, it's a perfectly serviceable case, but I'm not going to sell this as, yeah, it's a great case. You definitely need to do something about that. Uh, it's not going to fall apart on you, but I do want you to be aware of that. But you've got uh, peeling Tolex pretty much everywhere. I mean, it's a well-gigged case, that's for sure. You have one broken latch here on the back, but you still have uh, two traditional ones and the locking latch that has never been set and you have the back one. So even though you're missing the one latch here, you're, you're still okay. The handles kind of started to turn green over time from a uh, sweat. Interior of the case, it still has the pink shroud. Miraculously, sometimes uh, people will cut it off there. Uh, you can see it's been shredded from uh, strings on the headstock, so it's not in the best shape. And uh, you also have wear there. I'm guessing the strings were left long and they started poking into it. I hate the, this part of the case anyway, so who cares about that? Uh, but you've got some wear and tear, as you're seeing. You've got some worn padding here. It's got the pink taken off of it, but it's still fairly padded. So it's definitely a well-used case, but it's served its purpose. As you can see, your uh, neck padding here is pretty much non-existent, but it's pretty good there yet. Now inside here is some of the original parts. I'm guessing this is the original three-way switch. Uh, it's probably malfunctioning or something. I don't know why they replaced it, but you can see uh, all the wear and tear on it. So it is in here if you want it, as is the original input jack. And also is a lot of these original receipts and a combo latch. Seats in here, I mean, these are back from 2000, this one, and it was $20 for something. I'm not quite sure. It was a, uh, a $535 for Les Paul, whatever that means. So I don't know if that really pertains to this guitar or not, but these ones definitely do. These are recent. These are definitely more recent. This one was in uh, June of this year. And you can see uh, they had spent almost $400 just getting this guitar back up to par. You can see here where it was paid to be set up. And you know, I was initially worried when I saw that the bridge was decked down, but after you play this thing, you're never gonna wanna adjust that thing. It's just, it's perfect. I mean, you might wanna raise the action a 
tiny little bit if you don't like super, super low action, but it plays awesomely. The Vacleans will be running through a Gibson Super Gold Tone GA30 RV. The dirty tones come from a Marshall JMP1C. <laughs> If you think you might be interested in the 79 Custom in a very, very, very well-worn H Silver Burst, 
Feel free to contact me on my Facebook page now that my review is done. Facebook.com slash Troglies, T-R-O-G-O-Y-S. You can also check out the listing on Reverb.com. Thank you for tuning in today, Troglites. I know I was a little long-winded today, but this guitar just blew me away. All right, thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Thank you.